So, it's recently come to my attention that I have literally never done anything whatsoever to do an official showcase of any of my work that I have ever done in terms of creating games and working with RPG Maker. I know, imagine having a YouTube channel, if you will, for six years, mentioning over and over again about your love for RPGs and RPG Maker, as well as various things that you have done in the past involving it, but never showcasing it whatsoever. And your name is the RPG Fox on top of it. Almost embarrassing, to be honest. But we're going to go ahead and change that today, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to start out with older projects that I have done, and then work our way towards the real project that I actually give a damn about, which would be the RPG that I've mentioned several times, and I've written lore and everything else, world building, etc., for literally a decade now at this point, older than that. However, everything starts off from some sort of a genesis, and then we work our way up from there. And I feel like it's important to provide things that show you guys how I have developed over time with my knowledge in RPG Maker VX Ace, specifically. And this is a pain in the ass to get this video going on the new rig, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, because I could not find my old product key. <laughs> and I needed to re-download it and all this other shit, and then my product key didn't work. When I finally found it, when I downloaded it from the original Dejica site, so I just rebought the fucking thing all over again on Steam. So now I have a new copy of it on Steam. So, yay me! It was only ten bucks at least. So if you guys are looking forward or wanting to do anything with like RPG Maker shit, by the way, especially after watching this video, you might want to look into that one now because that is a fucking steal for the RPG Maker VX Ace engine. However, I do believe that there are now two RPG Maker engines above this, not just the MV engine, so you may want to look into those first. I do not know 100%, nor can I put a video for that now in here to tell you guys what the differences are. You would need to do the research yourself, unfortunately. But I thought that I should mention that. Let's push on. So, today's project is a pretty interesting one, at least it is to me, and I am quite proud of the ground that I have started off with this, but dear god does it need to be updated considerably, because there's a lot of things about this RPG that really just make me cringe whenever that I go back into this and try to edit it every now and again, so yeah, that's always fun. Either way, the name of the project is going to be called Fallen, and I don't think that I'm going to be changing the name of this whatsoever. It's going to most likely continue to have this same naming principle all the way through the end if I see it through, or at least to the demo. That I really want to make sure that I get a demo out because it's incredibly close, and we'll talk about that one later, so... As much as I would love to describe in layman's terms and generalize what this project is, I really think it's a lot more important to just play it as is, and then I will talk afterwards and really just let this sink in for you. I apologize if the dialogue that you wind up seeing or any of the text in this point, by the way, is either misspelt improperly fucking grammatized? I don't even know what the word is that you would use for that though, but has improper grammar, improper spelling, or is just otherwise very cringy. This is, again, the dialogue was written about fucking five years ago, six years ago. I was in my early 20s, if not in my late teens when I started this project initially, so there's a lot of things I would love to change about it to make it less fucking cringy, but I can't do it right now, so. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, Fallen, I give you. Take notes on the opening screen because it is actually important towards things that I will touch into later on, and this is going to be a multi-part series. If you didn't already understand from the title, I plan to do two videos at least, showcasing the game with developer commentary with it, and then we will talk about all the behind-the-scenes shit that went into the development and thoughts and ideas that I had for the game. And then we'll go on from there, and I'll talk about all the just, again, random behind-the-scenes shit. But we should probably get a foundation of going through the game from beginning to end with what I have for available things to do first before I talk about that shit. So without further ado, let's do so.
I'm so sorry, man. I really wish there was something more to say, but I just don't know right now. You know I'm here for you, man. If you ever need anything, I'm there. Yeah. I lost my mom today. It's quite a wonderful start to the week, isn't it? But in truth, somehow I couldn't be sad about it. All I could do was ask myself, why? You going to be alright, Kai? Yeah, I'll be fine. Losing your mom and all, and not to mention only a year after Alice. It's fine, Leo. Thanks for asking, though. Forget that last thing. It's just... You're just being a good friend, Leo. Yes, but... Don't worry about it, man. It doesn't bother me anymore. What a lie. You've always been the guy to make sure I'm aware of things, so don't worry. I'm sure I'll be fine. You're a tough guy, Kai. I can't say that in the same situation that I would be as calm as you. In truth, I don't think I'm capable of feeling much right now. Yeah. Well, take care of yourself, man. I gotta head to work now. Oh, and drop by tomorrow, would you? Amy's been worried sick about you all day. I'll be there. It was then that I began to wonder. Today it was stronger than ever. I was unable to sleep. Same as always. Well, might as well hop on the computer until I get tired. And then this is where the game tells you that red books are save points, so... Let's go ahead and talk about a few things here, shall we? So, for starters, let's talk about these fucking splash screens. So, back in the day, I thought that it would just make the project look a lot more fucking professional and official if I had thrown these splash screens in. Now that I'm looking back at them, I'm not really so sure about it. Especially when I misspell the word genre. It's disgusting to look at. So the other fun thing about these splash screens, at least, is if you paid attention to them, then you know exactly what kind of game that this is. This is, at least, back in the day, the Silent Deviants idea of an RPG horror. This is what I wanted to do. Now it's just the RPG Fox property, and I actually have to fix something in-game, and we'll get to that one later. Now, obviously, if you couldn't tell there, it hits real hard at the very beginning to really fucking just kind of catch you off guard. That was the whole entire concept of it. It just immediately opens up with a funeral. So the concept of this was not necessarily to invoke a cheap reaction of sympathy for the main character, but rather, number one, to divert expectations a little bit and kind of throw you off guard. To my knowledge, I don't know very many RPG horrors that start out just in your face already at the very beginning. They usually kind of heat up into all of the horror aspects of it. This one just opens up right in your face with, boom, somebody is dead to the protagonist. So like I said, you establish some sense of empathy, because we've all been there, or at least a large majority of us. It's incredibly likely that we have all been there. We have all attended a funeral at some point, so there is that level of empathy, and it's meant to be a little bit more organic rather than cheap, as well as trying to put it into your brain in a more subtle way that the protagonist is kind of familiar, at least in recent time, to the concept of loved ones passing. And that's where we're going to be going through right here where it picks up. So that being said, let's move back over to the game. For starters, take notes on the dynamic lighting as we explore the room a little bit. I'll talk about it later, but this is not stock with RPG Maker VX Ace. So one of the first things that you want to do with an RPG Maker, just in true fashion of RPG horror, is descriptions are everything. There's not really much to do in these games, so you really want to nail down the uh, random things that you can put in here. It gives you a lot of options to subtly throw in different things that you would like to do on all of the objects within a room, and you basically leave it up to the player to explore those things. So, one of the first things that you'll notice right here is you can tell a lot about the main character from the room that's in here. There's a lot of fucking books, and in that chest off to the left, as we'll investigate in a moment here, he actually holds a hunting shotgun, so... 
that leaves you a little bit of ideology of what he does in his spare time and all that other stuff, as well as a grand piano sitting in the top left of the room that I'll be playing in a moment. But it just leaves you a lot of options to just put in random item descriptions for all of these things, as well as interactical, interactive lamps, rather, to change the lighting on and off in here. And I believe I'm just going through all of the actions in the inventory just to show you everything that is there. This is really just a standard RPG VX Ace menu with age using that being used rather than level for the keyword there in the menu. You have a health and a battery bar, and if anything, this is just a showcase that there's a lot of erroneous shit that I really need to get out of the menu system in this game, but it's not very important at the moment. This piano is actually fully interactable as well, and when you do so, Kai has the option to go and play a fairly lengthy excerpt of solo piano music that I got from Newgrounds a while ago and clipped for this, but I'm gonna let that play for now. If you notice, it's nothing like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star either, like, he is quite skilled at playing the piano, so just a little bit of background to the character here. No matter how soothing the sound, it's still not the same. Which very clearly throws out into the open there that there is some level of painful memory, or just memories in general, behind that piano. Obviously not enough information to work with. Now I didn't really want to put a hand-holding tutorial in here, however, I think it's important to get buttons and control, like, yeah, control buttons out of the way. Because this isn't exactly like playing Halo on an Xbox One controller, this is... RPG Maker VX Ace. Not many people know about both buttons to go into your menu to interact, and that shift is actually a sprint button that you can do, which there is sprinting in this game. There's not a sprint bar that's silly, though I've considered putting it into the game, and that'll become more relevant later on, but I digress. I, of course, wanted to showcase the difference between sprinting and just regular walking, though I do believe that it's just a two times speed multiplier. I could be wrong about this, though. Now, take note of the Kaz awesome light effect script that I am using to be able to get all of this ambient lighting down so that you can see that there's a lamp off into the corner of the room. There are flaws with this lighting system, however, it is extremely good at what it is intended to do, which is to provide that ambiance for a horror feel, or at least to make the lighting just seem that much more dynamic and, you know, accurate. After all, this is just infinitely better than going into Photoshop, putting on an alpha layer over an image, and then just spray painting the center out to kind of give that lantern effect, which was actually used in the witch's house, by the way. That was how they did that effect when you went into the darker area, but I'm not even going to go into those methods right now. I will compile my thoughts for the sake of consistency in an easier editing time. Go ahead and just enjoy the ambiance of exploring the house with the lighting effects and all the different random comments that Kai makes about shit. As you'll see in a moment, I used Yanfly's Gab window script as a little extra immersion here so that you can see what Kai is thinking during certain sequences, like such. I'll zoom in right here for you. It just lets you see what he's thinking at the time whenever that he's walking through areas. I just thought that it would be a nice little touch and attention to detail.
Now, as I said earlier, I'm going to go ahead and compile my thoughts about this segment for you guys right here. All in all, I'm mostly pretty content with the way that his house is at this beginning chapter of the game, the prologue, but there's a couple of things I would like to change, because there is a big glaring issue that I just actually realized not too long ago with this that I would like to change later on down the line, but we'll talk about that one afterwards when I compile it. First, there's a lot of things that you can learn about Kai just from examining all of his stuff around the house. Mainly that he's a very simple man. He doesn't have a billion different things or objects or whatever the case is. Everything is generally pretty neat. He's clearly very anal retentive as well. There's not really messes or anything of the sort. Everything has its place, with the exception of the kitchen. There's a couple of things laying around in there, though, but this is an intentional thing. The point is that aside from obvious lighting lamps that need to be in the game to be in the game as interactables, on top of it just making it a lot more organic looking as a house, a couple of potted plants, the fact that he is clearly into guns as a sporting thing, and books and that grand piano, there's not really anything that he has for worldly possessions here. It's a pretty straightforward and simple house. Now, a lot of this is due to asset limitations, because there's only so much that I have in the default engine, and then there are other tile sets that I have used in here. I used to have an asset list of everything that I had, and all of their contributions, and the links that you would need for them, but I don't know where that text file is, unfortunately. I think it's saved somewhere on my laptop, so I can't really use these if I were to actually publish the game, unfortunately. The funny thing to keep noted here is that this game is very fourth wall breaking at times. Kai is a very sarcastic individual that you get out of a lot of his back and forth discussions with presumably the player when he interacts with things. And he likes to poke fun at a lot of things that don't necessarily make sense within the game world and an in-world thing. But they have to be that way because of, again, just limitations on assets or just ways that I have designed things as a placeholder for later on down the line if I want to fix them. Just so that it's at least going to provide, hopefully, a laugh if immersion breaking in any way, shape, or form. So that's something that you want to keep in mind for, like, again, this, this weird asset that is in the middle of the kitchen where there's, like, an appliance of some kind that you're not even sure what it is. I, I guess a smaller fridge or something like that. Or the fact that there are just vegetables out and they never rot. So, I thought that that would just be a little random tidbit to put in there. And there's so much more of this as we go later on. Now, the problem with this house that I would like to fix later on down the line is that we are missing out on a major thing that I could put into the game. Now, there's a big problem with subtlety that I have done in this RPG horror, and you will see what I mean as we go further on, but there's a lot of things that are kind of in your face with this that I could be considerably more subtle about, and I could also do it here. Obviously... If you didn't already pick up from other context clues with Kai, and this isn't a spoiler, but he had an ex-girlfriend by the name of Alice, which is a lot of the point to the storyline here. And Alice, very clearly, from events that you'll see later on in the demo, again, he has memories of being within this house with Alice. Not necessarily living with her, from because there's just not enough information with it, but... There's something that I could do here where I could just put subtle hints where there's belongings of said person within this home and just all of those other things and he could just have like painful memories of that or whatever the case is and just subtle clues like you know what I mean that somebody else used to be here. A little extra attention to detail and very effective if done properly. But we're going to go ahead and continue further along here. So, I saved because I know that there's an upcoming branching path to do, and I want to do both branches, so I went here to go ahead and showcase the save menu, which I think is pretty clean and straightforward. I just need to remove a couple of random variables that are showing in the save menu that don't need to be there. Like, for example, secrets and developer secrets are exactly the same, and ammo supply is completely fucking useless to put in there. Yeah, this computer has seen far too much use. Well, that's a new one. This computer's beat up, but it can't be that bad. Hmm. Damn thing. Back to sleep. If I can manage it.
Okay, so this cutscene marks the first jump scare of the entire game. I hope that you guys caught that. It's not super hard to miss, but it is kind of subtle. It's not in your face, and there's not a fucking string quartet on your back to make you jump out of your seat. Though initially, this jump scare was supposed to be a face flashing on screen whenever that you went over to fuck with that, but then I realized that that was stupid, and I'm much better than that. Time to sleep, then. I could barely sleep that night. Well, Leo works second shift, so he should be more than home. So, with this beautiful piano music going on in the background, which is what I want most of the soundtracks of the game to be, is just this kind of stuff, and then there's also the horror ambiance. I wanted to go through the house one more time just to showcase what it looks like during the daytime. The weird thing about the Kaz lighting effects is you actually need to go into the um, game engine itself and then set it to nighttime or make it darker yourself with the color correction in order for it to work. So this is just normal daytime with 000 set to the lighting to be able to get this to happen. Those lights can still be toggled on and off in the nighttime you will see the difference. And then, of course, we have that other jump scare right there. So I'll go ahead and play that again before we move back over to here. You look horrid, man. You seriously need to start sleeping at night. Would have loved to last night. You sure you're all right, Kai? Of course, I just need some time. Well, you know that Leo and I are always here. I don't want to annoy you. I just want you to try to take it easy. It would upset me more than anything if something happened to you, especially Leo. Yep, it's about time for me and Amy to head out a bit. You sure you're not coming with us? Nah, I'm not feeling up to it. Besides, I wouldn't want to impose on you two. Man, I've told you this before, Amy doesn't think you're getting in the way of our alone time. Trust me, we get plenty of it now, she isn't living with her mom anymore. Thank you, Leo. But I'll have to pass this time. I'm sure you'll understand. Sorry. Kai. And then we're back to in front of the house with the home address, which means literally nothing. Unfortunately, there is no way to go out into the yard from here. Don't ask about the brick wall for the fucking fencing, but that is indeed a thing. <sighs> what to do? Was that... I'm so going to regret this. However... <laughs> so now we have our first choice in the game. These are mostly negligible at the moment, but boy did I make the sound effects super important sounding. This initial choice does matter, though, because it does move where a certain item can be, as well as give you a little extra dialogue, depending on how things roll out. Hmm? I wonder what this is. I'll read it later. And then there's your first medium scrap. So these are items that can change the ending of the game. It's how you get the good ending. I just wanted to showcase that you can indeed read it now and sequence break, but you will read it in a couple of moments after the shower scene here, so. Yes, it is blacked out, you degenerates. Was that? This day just keeps getting more and more fun. So that actually changes very slightly if you were to pick the other option. And then here we're going to go out and read the medium scrap. <sighs> what exactly has been going on lately? Feels almost as if I'm dreaming, but I'm not waking up. Now I'm literally starting to see shit? I don't exactly think that was a hallucination. An even better question. What was that paper in my living room? 
So this is going to be a bitch to read. We'll go through it in a minute when it's much better to work. This is what I was saying, that there are issues with the Kaz lighting effects. This is one thing that is a side effect. There's something else on the back. A page from a medium's journal. Here? His name was really fucking generic. Good job, game creator. Maybe he lived here once? Weird. I feel that what I just said was used as a plot device in some other RPG horror. Anyway, let's find out this address. So just as a side note, I, I also wanted to pump in my two cents here as well, guys. Like I said, a lot of the dialogue here I really want to go through and change. A lot of it is kind of cringy and eh, but uh, some of that, again, is just poking fun at the fact that none of this really makes perfectly logical sense and the plot needs to move forward, but, you know, yeah. Either way, let's go ahead and take a look at this medium scrap, but inside of the menu. I've officially moved into the new house. It's a good change in scenery and it looks great. Work starts immediately again as I get settled in, so there isn't much time to slack. I worry for the spirits that haunt that place. Kyle the medium. 127 Artifice Street. So as a random side note as well, just to continue from that, ladies and gentlemen, artifice is a really fancy word for trap or possibly diversion as well, so just a small little attention to detail there that could be picked up by people who like knowing like definitions of words and stuff like that, people who are into that kind of stuff, and that was 100% intentional using that as an address. The Kyle the Medium thing is just absolutely... Oh my god, I don't know why I went with that as a name, but hey, it's whatever. I could have literally gone with anything other than Kyle. So I have a few things to say here. First and foremost, this little thing about reading medium scraps from the save point is completely useless as a feature, since you can just use them from your inventory. It just adds a janky-ass choice selection. Secondly, there's no save point there. I don't know why the texture's fucked up, but you can still save. And I gotta fix that, it's probably just a very simple no image used there. But I came back here to go ahead and load up the old save and show you the other route if I were to not investigate the noise at the door, so we're gonna go ahead and jump cut to that. So the dialogue just ends there, rather than this day keeps getting better. And then this makes actual sense, because the medium scrap pops up here, and the gab window earlier says, hmm, what's that? Now, just as a side note, if you guys didn't notice, that gab window still pops up regardless on the other route. So that's just a small coding error on my side. I just need to add an extra conditional to check if the item is in your inventory already. And that would solve the problem. So, very easy fix. Anyway, let's get back to the plot of the game right here going to the computer. That's only a few blocks down the road from that old pizza place. That should be an easy enough walk. I'll see if this medium can help with my situation. Now, if you can't tell, he obviously walks and doesn't drive, so... Are you sure you want to leave? Yes and not yet. And then that ends the chapter right there. With one scrap found. I don't even know why I have this weird loading screen thing going on here, because it just unnecessarily pauses you at certain moments when it doesn't need to. There's no loading involved, but just a thing that needs to happen there. Also, during one of these chapter changes later on, you actually cannot save there for whatever reason. And this is what I was talking about with the pause. It just stops you from going further, but chapter one begins here, and that's the end of the prologue. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna end up this first part right here. End it out, rather. This may wind up being three parts for the actual fucking Let's Play part of the game. Which, dear god, I didn't expect it to be this long. This is starting to take a lot longer than I had ever anticipated the video to take initially. But I'm okay because I want to be very thorough with this. I want to enjoy my time with it. And I would like to know what you guys think about what I had done right there. This is even mildly lazy editing, to be honest with you, because I only have a day to do this to be able to get it up, because obviously tomorrow is Christmas Day and all that other stuff. So I can only really do this now, and then have this one up, and then I can finish the remainder of the series after that point. If you guys would like to continue to see these, let me know, and 
whatever kind of opinions that you can pitch towards it, uh, do's, don'ts, or whatever the case is that you think should be suggested, let me know. And that's, again, going to wrap up everything to do with this episode for today. So join me in Chapter 1 the next time that I wind up uploading, which will probably be a day or two after Christmas. So take it easy, guys.